This is a CO2 regulator from Milwaukee Instruments, model MA957. It's about six or seven years old and has been in storage the last four years. I used it to inject CO2 into a planted aquarium. When I shut the tank down four years ago, I put the regulator in a box and stored it in my shed. Now I'm thinking of doing another planted tank, so I brought the CO2 regulator in from the shed. I pulled the regulator out of the box and gave it a try. It didn't work. It worked when I stored it away four years ago, so I don't know what the problem is. Let's walk through the diagnosis and we'll try to figure this out together. This regulator has five working parts. The high pressure inlet gauge, the low pressure outlet gauge, the flow pressure regulator, the solenoid, and the bubble counter with the needle valve. First, let's check the canister and make sure it has CO2 in it. Now, let's connect the regulator to the canister. The first thing we notice is the low pressure gauge is reading 32 pounds of pressure. That shouldn't be happening. I haven't opened the canister valve yet to let the pressure into the regulator. There is no pressure for the gauge to read. This is an issue. Now let's open up the canister. As I open the valve on the canister, we can see the high pressure inlet gauge move. This is normal. Now let's turn the flow pressure regulator knob and see if we can get the low pressure outlet gauge to move off the 32 pound mark. As you can see, the outlet gauge moved off the mark. The gauge then may not be the problem. The inaccurate reading may just be a side effect of the core problem. A gauge just displays the pressure. It is unlikely a non-functioning gauge would shut the unit down. Next, we move on to the solenoid. Did you hear that? I didn't either. The solenoid is a mechanical device with moving parts. It controls the flow of the CO2. You can feel the vibration as the valve opens and closes. It's open, the gas flows. It closes, the flow stops. Now, this particular unit, the MA957, has a very distinctive clicking sound and it's very loud when it first turns on. The lack of a clicking sound and no vibration indicates the solenoid isn't functioning. The CO2 regulator isn't functioning because the solenoid isn't opening or closing properly. The outlet gauge is just a side effect. My next step is to remove the solenoid from this unit. Loosen all four screws on the underside of the solenoid and remove the solenoid from the unit. We can see rust on the point of contact. We can also see corrosion in the pin valve. This of course prevents the pin from moving. When the pin doesn't move, the valve doesn't work. It looks like I have to replace the solenoid. So I'll have to remove the pin valve as well. The new solenoid will include that part. Seeing that type of corrosion leads me to believe the problem is with this part. When troubleshooting something, when you get to the problem and the solution is straightforward, you don't look any further. But I want to take a moment to talk about how to troubleshoot the flow pressure regulator valve if we have to. These valves tend to wear out rather than break. If we were still troubleshooting and the gauge is at zero and the solenoid clicked, then we would look to the flow pressure regulator valve. If this was hooked up to a canister and I turn the knob and the gauge needle doesn't move off of zero, then it's the flow pressure regulator valve that's causing the problem. You can purchase a rebuilding kit for around $20 to $25 from the manufacturer. 
It contains all the parts and instructions to rebuild the flow valve. Let's get back to the solenoid. When I remove the solenoid from the flow regulator, the outlet gauge dropped to zero. That's a good sign. I'm guessing a small amount of pressurized CO2 was caught between the solenoid and the outlet gauge. This means the reading is a side effect. The gauge is working, so I may not need to purchase a new one. Now looking at the solenoid, we can see that the pin is broken off inside the valve. This passage should be open. This is the root cause of our problem. The entire passageway is blocked with what looks like a calcium buildup. It is likely there was still moisture trapped in the bubble counter when I stored the regulator. The moisture seeps down to the solenoid, evaporates, and calcifies on the valve, causing the pin to break. The part is too damaged for repair, but a new solenoid unit includes a pin valve. I purchased a new solenoid from Amazon for about $20. It runs off a 12 volt adapter, so it should be cheaper to operate than the original which ran off 110 volts. The new unit comes with fittings for air hoses. You can just remove these. I clean the fittings on the bubble counter and the regulator. With the needle valve open, I shot compressed air through the bubble counter passageway to make sure it was functioning, that it opened and closed. Now I can install the solenoid onto the regulator. I decided to use thread sealing tape to seal the connections. Yellow is for gas. You could use a liquid thread sealing product. This basically glues the connections together. Let's hook up the canister and test the new solenoid. And the best part, hear that? I did. Eureka! It works! Both gauges and the bubble counter are functioning. The cost of a new CO2 regulator from Milwaukee Instruments model MA957 is about $115. But I spent a little time first to see if I could find the problem and fix it. Our troubleshooting indicated it was a solenoid, a $20 part I can install myself. And the gauge is functioning. A replacement would have cost me about $10. So the time I spent troubleshooting and fixing the CO2 regulator, about an hour and a half, saved me $95. And you can do this repair yourself. Thanks for watching.